Hi, welcome to the Sacramento History Museum's Museum Monday. And today it's the last Monday of the month, so we're going to have another story time. This week, I'm going to tell you the story. It's a Norwegian folktale. It's called The Squire's Bride, retold by Peter Abjorsen. Abjornsen. <laughs> and so it begins again with those favorite four words. Once upon a time. <laughs> there lived a rich squire. He was ruddy and stout. He had a mint of silver in the barn and gold aplenty in the bank. He farmed over hill and dale, and yet he had no wife. So he had a mind to wed. Now he thought that he could get anything he wanted with his money. After all, since I am rich, I can pick and choose any one I wish. Well, one day the rich old squire was riding down the road when he happened upon a sturdy lass. She was working in the field, toiling in the fields, working behind the plow, and he thought to himself, Hmm, why, I think she'll do all right and save me a bundle in wages, too. <laughs> in payment, why, ah, she'll do wonderfully since she's poor and humble. She can hardly refuse my offer. So the next day, he had the farmer bring the daughter up to the house, and he sat her down all hot and flustered. Now, rather than sitting there talking to the old squire, she wanted to be off in the fields finishing her work. Now then, I've a mind to take a wife. Well, mind on then. <laughs> One may mind of much and more. Oh dear. I wonder if the old geezer has his sights set on me for a bride. Why else would I be summoned here? Well then, lass, I, I've picked you out. You'll make a good bride right enough. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, thank you. Oh, though much obliged, I'm sure. Well, the squire's ruddy face turned ruby red. He was not used to somebody refusing him, but the more he blathered, the more she would refuse. And the more she refused, the more he wanted what he could not have. With a final sigh, he dismissed the lass and sent for her father. Now perhaps the man could talk some t sense into the girl. Now then, I'll forget all the debt you owe me, and I'll throw in a meadow into the bargain. How would you like that? A meadow for your old gray mare, huh? Huh? Oh, yes, sir. Oh, that a meadow would be wonderful. Yes, indeed. Uh, be sure. I'll bring her around. I'll get her to consent. But, but pardon her plain speaking. You know, she's, she's young and, and she's a bit stubborn. Well. The father tried, but with all his coaxing and pleading, the young woman was adamant. She would not marry the squire, not even if he was made of gold. No, 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 no. He cannot buy my heart. I will work the land, for I'm as strong as any man, but I will not marry the squire. Well, when the farmer did not return to the squire with his daughter's consent, the squire stormed and stamped in, in a rage. Finally, the next day, he went straight to the farmer and he said, now see here, you make your daughter change her mind or else all the debt you owe me, you'll pay straight away. I won't wait another moment for my bride. Well, together, the squire and the farmer hatched a little plan. The squire was to see to all the wedding details, the wedding dress, the wedding feast, the wedding guests, the preacher, all of the details, and the farmer was not to say a word of it to his daughter. On the big day, he would just let his daughter know that work waited for her up at the big house. And so it was arranged. 
Now on the day of the big feast, when all of the guests had arrived and were assembled in the parlor, the squire sent for one of his stable lads. All right, lad, I want you to go to the farmer and fetch what I was promised. Run there straight and back and make sure you get exactly what I was promised. Well, the lad was so, so much in a hurry, he forgot to ask what the promise was. But he ran straight to the farmer's house and he got to the door and breathless he said, oh, I've come to fetch what was promised for the squire. Oh yes, you'll find her out in the, in the meadow working behind the plow. Take her with my blessings. So the boy ran to the meadow and there he found the daughter behind the plow, working at the plow and behind the old gray mare. He breathless once again, he said, I've come to fetch what your father promised the, the, the squire for his wedding day. Really? Well, just what did my father promise the squire? I, I, I don't know. I, I was in such a hurry. I forgot to ask. But he said that I would find her working at the plow. Well, it didn't take her long to figure out that little plan. Working at the plow, you say. Well, then, and she unhitched the old gray mare. Then you must mean this horse. Well, the lad looked at the horse, and with a leap and a bound, he was on her back and took off back to the, to the manor. Once off, he slid off the back and dashed inside and yelled for the squire, she's here, she's a beauty, she's waiting at the door. Well, the squire was delighted. Oh, fine, lad, yeah, well, well, don't let her stay outside, take her up to the bridal chamber. But uh, don't look at me like that. If you can't manage it yourself, get some hands to help you. Well, the boy went out and got some field hands. He was very confused, but together they did the job. Some of them pulled on the old gray mare's ears. Some of them pushed her rump. They shoved and they heaved and they heaved and they shoved. And finally, finally, they got the horse up the stairs and into the bridal chamber. Once there, he went back to the squire and told him that that was the hardest job he had ever been asked to do. Why, she was so unruly, they had to tie her to a bedpost. Well, now, I knew she'd be stubborn. But I didn't think she'd be that stubborn. Well, tell me, what did she say when she saw the wedding dress? Well, by now, the poor boy was so confused. Sire, uh, sir, all she said was nay. Hmm, well, now, let me think. Well, get her dressed and then bring her down. What? Don't just stand there, get some handmaidens, get her dress, and tell them not to forget the veil and crown. <sighs> On glimpsing his angry face, he did exactly as he was told. He got some handmaidens, and together they dressed the horse. And once that was done, he went back to the squire, and he said, Well done, lad, well done. All right, now, bring her down. And I've got all the guests assembled, the preachers ready to perform the ceremony. Just throw open the doors and announce the bride. Well, there came a loud clattering and clumping and thumping and stomping as the old gray mare was prodded back down the stairs. And there she stood wild-eyed before the door when suddenly the doors burst open and all the elegant guests turned round in expectation. And imagine the shock they got. In walked the old gray mare dressed entirely like a bride. She had a veil over her eyes, a crown hanging off one ear, and a gown that barely covered her rump. The, the guests let out a roar of laughter and the horse saw the crowd and let out a fierce neigh and turned tail and ran from the house. 
The preacher was so shocked he poured his, spilled his port all over his purple front and the squire just gaped in amazement. And they said that the squire never went courting again. Now, as for the girl, some say she married, some say she never did, but it doesn't matter. What certain is that she lived happily ever after? Thank you for joining me for Storytime on Museum Mondays, and we will see you next week, I think, when we're going to talk about love and romance. See you next time.